What's up? It's Casey here. How's it going? Let me know if you can hear me. Click on and say, uh, put a one in the chat if you can hear me. This is Casey. We're going to be talking about Facebook, guys. Get ready for it. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to block you. Let me flip this around and put this back on my stand. Hold on one second. Hey everybody, it's Casey here. Sorry I look, again, like trash in my hat and my crazy hair. Doesn't matter though. It's more about what you're going to learn today. Don from Houston is here. Welcome, Don. How are you? Good to see you. Who else do we have? Let me know. Yeah, if you guys are getting here, just let me know who is here. Um, Zod just joined. Awesome, you guys. Yep. So uh, let me know. Let me know. Joe from Spain. Let me pull this up. Whoa, there goes my desk. Okay, Jeff from Seattle. Awesome, you guys. Cool. Um, so, guys, we're going to be talking about uh, Facebook ads. Let me pull this up. Mm -hmm. Moving my standing desk up, as you guys can see. What's up, bud? I'm doing pretty good, Rick. What's going on? Rick Mulready, the king of Facebook, is actually here. Uh, it's very exciting stuff. So, everyone, um, the reason I'm going to be doing this particular training is because I'm in my Facebook group. People have been asking about this. I see some guys that are suffering with their Facebook ads, driving them into an automated webinar. I thought that I would create or do a quick Periscope to show you what I'm doing and some of my best uh, stuff, my best ads, the ones that are performing the best uh, from the return on investment as well as cost per lead. It's cool to have Rick Mulready in here. Guess why? Because he's the guy that I kind of learned a lot of this stuff from. So the master is in the house. So here's what I want you to do before we start. Joe, Casey, you demand. Thank you. If you are a first timer here, okay, first time here, type in teach. Okay, if this is your first time here, type in teach. All right? And if you've been here before, type in learning. Okay, so I know who's here for the first time and who has been here before. Learning, teach, learning. Okay, so we have some people that have been here before. Most of you have. Learning, learning, learning. Awesome. So I'm excited for those who are brand new peeps here uh, that type in teach. Thank you for coming. Um, what I'm going to be sharing with you today is some of my best marketing funnels that I'm using with Facebook to drive traffic into an automated webinar, which is my best converting funnel out there. So. If you guys don't know who, my, who I am, my name is Casey Zeman. I'm the founder of Easy Webinar, a software that does both live and automated webinars. And I do periscopes uh, all about how to use the top engagement strategies for building a business and brand that you absolutely love. Uh, and, uh, and that's what I teach here. So um, I'm very excited to share this with you. If you want to do me a favor, if you feel like some people could benefit from this that are not on this particular scope yet, click this little dude right here or swipe right to share with your Twitter friends or your uh, Periscope buddies. I would say your Twitter peeps would be the best one to do. Um, that swipe right if you're on an iPhone and swipe up if you're on Android and you can just share this with your peeps, okay? And be sure to follow me. Thank you so much, Stream Horror. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the hearts. Um, and be sure to follow me if you're not following me already or wait till I show you what I have going on and if you feel comfortable with following me at the end, do so. I always say, you know, wait till, well, wait till I teach you something and then you guys can go from there. So um, I'm going to now uh, show you guys what I have going on here. Okay. Um, first, I'm going to go into Twitter because I told my peeps that I would actually share this with them when I was doing it. So I'm going in right now, grabbing Periscope and putting it into all of my, putting it into all of my uh, groups. All right, so here we go, putting that in that group, uh, publish, putting that in this group, bam, publish, putting that in this group. <laughs> I have I have all these different groups and pages, uh, my um, various, and I'll show you where I put them. Okay, so guys, thank you so much. We're going to get pretty excited here. Um, how many of you are using Facebook ads in your business? Um, please let me know. John Deerhat, I'm from Iowa. Awesome, Don. My wife is from Iowa. This is actually an authentic Iowan hat, okay? This is not like I'm in LA, but this is, you know, this is an actual Iowa right here style. Uh, I am. You guys are using Facebook ads or you're trying to use Facebook to promote yourself. Um, how many of you are having good success with it? How many of you are building leads every single month with uh, Facebook ads? Uh, once or twice, but did not continue with it. Okay, so you probably started and you felt frustrated, so you probably stopped, right? 
not sure how to how to use it, maybe not sure how to use the, the power editor and all these difficult things that you kind of have to think about when doing Facebook, which is kind of interesting because Facebook has tried to make it much easier. Still, it's not as intuitive as you want, but it's definitely easier than it used to be. Um, yeah, so it, someone said maybe amazing sales. They were trying to get some sales. Well, that's what we're going to talk to you guys today about. I'm going to share more than 2,000 leads per month uh, Titch the Great, that's awesome. That's exactly what I'm looking for right there. That's perfect. Um, yeah, and that's that's the type of thing that you can do with Facebook ads when doing them right. I'm going to share with you what I'm doing, okay? Now, I'm not a Facebook ad genius. I leave that to Rick Mulready. But what I can do is tell you what I'm doing and show you um, one inside my group how I had somebody ask about, Casey, how do I, how do, I do this, the Facebook ad stuff? I'm going to show you um, a couple things that I've learned um, about how, you know, essentially um, an ad needs to represent um, the same thing as the ad, as where the ad is going, okay? And oftentimes it's the message that you're putting in your ad that causes the rift, that causes people not to actually take action on it. Uh, and also it could potentially be who you're marketing it to, okay? Whether that's to, you know, your a custom audience that might have visited your website, or maybe it's, you know, someone that you're, um, an interest that you're targeting, uh, such as a specific person, you know, like um, anybody, you know, like Barack. Obama or something like that, whatever you're looking, whoever you want to target, those are options that you have inside Facebook. But what I'm going to do is I am going to go in and go into my group here and show you a couple things that are working for me. Again, as I said, automated webinars are my best or my very best um, converting uh Tool essentially, it's but my best marketing tool is automated webinars. Driving Facebook to an automated webinar. Do you guys know what an automated webinar is? How many of you do? If you guys have been to my scopes before, you probably do. If you do, put it in the chat box. Yes, I know what an automated webinar is. Yes, Julie Cornish says yes. How many else? Yes, yes. Okay, cool, awesome. No, okay. So Foundation Fund doesn't. Okay, that's okay. We're going to explain that. Um, so some of you guys do, some of you don't. A lot of times, maybe you uh, are used to hearing about, say, lead pages driving traffic, say from uh, from Facebook into a landing page where someone can sign up for a mini course. Well, that's one way to build leads. Okay, the way I do it, uh, it I do that, but I also use an automated webinar. I do both and I keep checking to see which is performing better and by far my automated webinar is performing better than my mini course. Okay, that's my that's what I've been noticing. So let me show you some of the things and reasons why I think my ads are performing really well. Okay, two, 225% return on investment um, is, is really good and $2.94 on my newest leads that I created probably two weeks ago. So let me show you that. I'm going to flip the screen around so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Is it because you choose different times on the automated? Yes. I mean, that's one of the things. A lot of people have been asking me specifically, you know, on the automated, why can't I get my automated webinar to perform? Yeah, partially it's the message. Partially, it's the way that the actual site looks, but the other thing is maybe, maybe, um, how many options you're giving for people to register, okay? So I'm going to flip this around so you can see what I'm doing on my automated webinar compared to, say, someone in our group. Now, if you're in a Facebook group or if you are, yeah, if you're in our in Easy Webinars Facebook group, tell people that we're doing this so they know to come in there, okay? Uh, I just want them to know that this is where they want, they are definitely going to want to see this. So. I'm going to go into my Facebook group right now, and here it is right here. I had this question. Let me flip this around. Okay, so I, I had this particular question from Benji uh, Portno, Port Portnoy. Um, he's saying he's having a rough time with his ads, okay? Um, not He's not able to, um, to, to, uh, to get the uh, the the conversions that he was wanting. So um, I noticed right off the bat what he was using for the registration page and kind of what I was doing. So um, first there was some good um, sort of advice uh, where Justin Miller said uh, the site was the kind of the, his site initially was way too impersonal. Um, you know, you put your uh, picture at a minimum shoot a video that is more natural, like talking to a friend, not like a TV commercial. That's a lack of connection. So uh, this is oh this is my easy webinar group. This is for people that have purchased easy webinar. Um, so 
one thing that you can do to make your, um, first off, your, your webinar pages convert better uh, is to, if you are going to put a video on there, is to have a video that does speak a little more personal, okay? That's what we're noticing, that, you know, it's a little more your story, a little more heart um, represented is a better way to go with this thing. Um, and, uh, and this is what um, Benji created here. Let me just show you. Now, personally, <clears throat> okay, so personally, you know, this is one of Easy Webinar's pages, albeit one of their, the old pages that you have with Easy Webinar. Now, with Easy Webinar, you can also create a lot of different pages. This is one of the older templates that he's using. Now, uh, he switched this up we'll pr and, and changed a lot of the message around, which will probably help his ad. But one thing that I do that he doesn't do in his automated webinars, first off, is he has uh, dates selected, so um, which is actually cool. Like he actually, he looks like he limited um, how many times one can register. So with an automated webinar, it looks like he's showing that you can do yesterday's replay, or he could register for uh, the twentieth, which is I think it's today, right? Yeah. So he's showing that you can read, he can register for an event that's happening right now, or I can choose to watch yesterday's replay. This will definitely help with conversion, and so will a personal video. But um, if I could show you uh, one of my ads and what I'm tending to do, part of good conversions is one from to the to the place that they're landing, but it's more so in regards to uh, in regards to you know the continuity between the ad and the place they're going. Okay, learn to present. So let me go in. Let me see here. Okay, so let me go into the ad right here. All right. So here's one of my newest ads, by the way. I just set this up. Um, it's because I'm going to be promoting uh, David Simon Garland uh, this next week. And so I created an ad already to go. We just got the approval on it. Uh, I have one conversion on it. It's gone to 62 people. We're at 72 cents right now. Now, that's way too early to tell how this particular ad is going to do. Um, but we're, we're going we're gonna to check on that, okay? Now, let me show you some of my ads that are performing really well so you get an idea of what you can do. So um, I have two funnels here. I have my funnel that goes to my, my free uh, mini course, okay? Uh, but then I have the automated webinar funnel right here. Sorry if this is a uh, bouncy. I Sorry about that. All right, so let's look at the numbers here. Uh, 200 conversions. We're at about 294, uh, right? This one is a little higher for the uh, the funnel. I have to change the images out because what happens oftentimes is your images can get dull, I've noticed, and so I, I kind of have to switch around my images oftentimes. So what I want to do is go into here and show you some of how these images are doing, okay? Um, so let's look at this one right here. So uh, the lowest conversion rate right now and the pretty pretty decent ones are these two right here. These are two images or two ads that are performing really well. Uh, let me click on here and show you what we got here. This one is two dollars and eighty cents. Okay, um, and let me show you what the what the actual ad looks like. Here it is right here. Um, now, a couple things. Sorry, I'm, I'm moving this around. Tilt the phone up a bit. Is that better? What's your monthly ad budget? Um, you know what? I do anywhere from three to four thousand dollars in terms of how much I'm spending on ads, uh, but I probably should ramp it up because some of these ads are performing really well. So um, you can see this. So this goes to my automated webinar, right? Uh, free workshop and workbook: How to be a webinar winner, create a six-figure money-boosting webinar by creating by mastering the new evolution of webinars. What I really like about this ad and the reason I think it performs well is because it's an action-based ad. Um, it's me actually in the act of doing a webinar, right? And I feel like because it's literally me in the act of doing a webinar, it performs better than, say, other ones do. How do you know what picture is better than the other? So the other way I can do it is I, I, I can see what ads are performing better. So these are the other ads right here. So here's another ad right here, okay? That's another ad. This one is performing uh, almost as good. Okay, it's just a different image. 
It's got about a two dollars and fifty cents. Avoid budget focus on ROI. Right. Uh, it's got about a two dollar and fifty cents per conversion. Okay. Um, now uh, the reason I think this one performs is because it's interesting, it's unique, um, and you know what I also feel like is a lot of it is in the title. Now again, I am not an ad genius. I kind of look to Rick Mulready for that. But this has always worked for me, putting something in brackets like this, like free workshop plus workbook, kind of saying, hey, what do you get? Right here, it's right in the title, right in the very front of what they can do. And you know, when they, the, the thing about these is that they perform pretty decently because where they're going, let me just preview this so you can see where I'm sending them. I'm sending them, let me bring this over, where'd my mom, here we go. Okay, so if I go in to learn more, uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Let me let me view in newsfeed here, so we can kind of test this. Catches the eye. It's also longer text in the ad. Yeah. So here it is, right here, right. So if I click on the ad, it will bring me into this automated webinar right here. And this is an automated webinar, just like what um, our other um, easy webinar uh, user was doing. I can't, can't remember his name. Let me go in here. Benji, I think, right? Benjamin? Benjamin, I think it was, right? So Benji, uh, let me go into easy webinar. Um, yes, Benji, yeah. So um, the reason I think that th mine, this one, does better, how long have you been doing webinars, income starting, started with then and now. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you exactly. So the reason I think this is doing better is because I have removed the, um, have you tried the sign up call to action button? You know what, I, you know, Rick, that's a great question. I've never tried that. I've always done the learn how. I've never tried the sign up to see how better that is. It might be. Um, I'd love to get your ideas or thoughts on that because I've always done the learn more, um, almost like a softer sell, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm curious what the sign up now would uh, would do. So I've never tried that. Um, but what I've been doing recently, guys, is I've been re um, uh, removing some of the fields on my webinar. Yeah, using that most uh, almost all the time now. Dude, I have to try that. So guys, if Rick says it, you have to do it. Okay, that's the bottom line. That's the rule. Um, he would know better than us. <laughs> that's the bottom line. Um, so I removed a couple additional fields here, uh, name and, or sorry, uh, so time selected and date selected, right? Date selected, time selected, I've removed those, right? Uh, and now I just have name and email. Inside Easy Webinar, we have this option where you can do this, where you can essentially remove um, the fields uh, but still serve a webinar to someone. So I have this set for tomorrow. So I blocked one of the days by by one day. So when everybody comes to this registration page, they'll be served the very next day and they'll be served, you know, this first time, right? Depending on where they are. And it's in my own time zone. Uh, and that'll be in your own time zone whenever you come to this page. So that's one thing I've done to increase the conversions on the actual landing page, the registration page, by removing some of the barriers of choosing future times. Now, with Easy Webinar, you can have future times listed, or you can serve them up to people when they come to the page um, so they don't have uh, future times to choose. You just serve, it, it automatically knows what time they're coming, and it serves them the next available webinar. Instead of them having to choose, you choose it for them, right? You can do that inside Easy Webinar. Um, so that's one thing I've been testing out, and to me, uh, the conversions are better because of that. But you know, I think partially also the conversions are doing pretty decent uh, because I've been going into Canva. I don't know if you guys know this, but I go into Canva and I build out my Facebook ads inside Canva. That's what I essentially do. Um, I I create all my Facebook ads inside there. I like that better. Less steps for the visitor. Yeah, uh, and so you know, I've gone through and. These are the different type of ads that I've created. Um, uh, let's see, share your link. So, so I, I really love the activity ads. I think they're always great, you know, kind of just different things you could do with Canva. Uh, I do that too. Awesome. So Canva is really great for creating good ads. I would definitely recommend it. This is kind of the thing that I use to create the images. 
Um, the most recent one, of course, is the David Simon Garland one, which I've been playing with. Um, I would love some input, actually. Now, so, so because I have some of you guys here, uh, let me ask you a question. Um, let me ask you guys a question. Oh, wait. I don't know if I can find this right now. Um, I was going to find my latest... Uh, my latest ads uh, because to see what you guys think of the images, but uh, it's okay. I'll um, I'll do that maybe later. But anyway, I'm ugly, so might not convert well. You're, you you license your face? Question mark. That's hilarious. Um, I do not license my face. I mean, I I could do an ad for someone if they wanted me to. I don't mind. Um, but you know, I don't think it's about how good you look. I think it's about the action that you perform, right? And then of course, it's all about you know, who you are serving it to. Here's another one of my ads that you guys maybe have had come to you. This goes to my, um, this goes to this particular page. One thing that I think the reason that this one also has success is because it's the, the matching image from the ad to the actual page itself. You notice that it's the same thing, right? Essentially just with a play button. Now inside Facebook, you can't have things like play buttons uh, inside on your, on your, uh, images, they won't let that happen. But what you can do is take an image and pass it over, uh, to, uh, essentially the, the ad itself. So this one performs pretty decently as well. It's congruency. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's exactly right. It is congruency. So the thing I wanted to mention today is that this, these ads have been performing, uh, better than then, well, this, these particular ads, this one and the other one, definitely should have consistency between ad and landing pages. Exactly. And guys, this is not, I mean, these are things that I've learned from Rick Mulready, essentially. Um, so, and I've been just hanging out and doing more and more of these and testing out and just seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, and so far, you know, these are our best performing, my best performing ads. Um, I'm noticing that I'm gonna, I have to tweak these every so often. Um, the, now the things that I don't, I'm not very good at, I like the action shots I will click on if I did not own EW already. Right. Um, now some things that I've been, you know, testing out are, uh, audiences. So, you know, the, the thing that a lot of you guys maybe don't know is that, you know, creating custom audiences and, and who you're serving the ads to is very important. That's something that a lot of people just don't quite know. Um, you can create custom audiences that are, say, people that are landing on your website, uh, people that are uh, buying from you, people that aren't buying from you. You can have audiences like people that are, are interest groups, maybe, from other people. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to kind of put the ads in front of the right people, right? Uh, and I do things maybe a little differently. I mean, I'm still trying to learn this stuff, but what I do is I oftentimes clump a bunch of um, my uh, custom audiences together uh, in one ad and then change the images around. Now, some people don't do that. Some people, and I've, I've heard that's probably a better way to do it, is to, to create separate audiences and separate ads per audiences and per interest groups, uh, which I do for interest groups. I just don't do it necessarily for audiences. I'd love to know Rick's opinion on that. But um, yeah, so this, is, this particular ad is performing uh, much better than... Um, than my mini course. And so that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Looks look a lot uh, look alike based on conversions. Are you retargeting also? Yes, uh, definitely doing some retargeting as well. Um, that's a part of this uh, through the custom audiences, retargeting those who come to the site. I like to break everything out when starting. Yeah, I mean, it's probably the smarter way to do it. Uh, I'm going to flip this back around. Yeah, definitely is probably a smarter way to do it. Um, I am, you know, I'm kind of putting all of my audiences in one um, in one place. Right, you just don't know what's performing. Right, otherwise you don't know which audiences are performing best. It, that's true. That's very true. Um, what I tend to do is I grab all of my audiences uh, that are, say, web visiting my website or, let's say, signed up to my list or, let's say, bought from me. Uh, and the more I add into there, I see that, you know, it adds, you know, 45,000 or something like that. You can see kind of what the number is that, that um, you know, it, that, that, that it ends up being that it serves. And so that, I tend to do that, but that's probably not the best way to do it. In fact, Rick just said it and, and Rick knows. So guys, I would definitely recommend, you know, if you're going to do it, splice things out so you can know what what audiences and what interests are performing better than others. I guess I need to follow Rick too. Yeah, definitely follow Rick. Rick, put yourself back up here so they can follow you if they haven't followed you already. Um, 
So that's what I have to say. And I have to say, without, you know, without a shadow of a, of a doubt, um, the automated webinars are performing better for me than the, than the actual um, mini course. Okay? Uh, I think it's because they are able to, to come in right then and there. Uh, they can register for it. It shows up the next day for them, and they can watch the event. And, of course, it, we have people that are ready to answer questions on the automated webinars, ready to go for them. I used to do SEO and PPC for adult sites then till they stopped paying. Interesting. Could you please answer what? What would you like an answer on? We could certainly uh, question QSR question. QSR codes, is that what you're asking? Um I'm not sure so much to do. A good idea to let a VA handle this stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, a VA, if they have this information, they know what they're doing, you know, because you could spend literally hours creating uh, ad images. Uh, and do you have that much time on your hands? Maybe not. So just realize, you know, you got you, you want to spend the time that you, you, you know, where it's going to make sense. How long to make good money? Uh, well, I mean, it really is going to depend on what you're selling. Uh, I think you have to go into business with a passion of whatever that business is because if you're not then you're just, and you're just going in to try to make some money, it's not really going to do all that well. What I, I do, a, I, I, the, the stuff that I do is I, um, I'm, I do have a business that I love, so I love doing this stuff and testing it. Great content, but way above my head, I'm afraid. Yeah, foundation fun, I get it. Uh, this stuff is is pure marketing. This, you know, lead building is the foundation of any business. I know I know we have some newbies here, and that's totally fine. But I did want to mention for the folks that are not newbies what we were doing here in terms of Facebook ads to drive traffic. Uh, you know, this is one solid solid way that you can be doing other things. I love automated webinars. How are you doing the simulated com comments? Yes, networking for life. Leads Foundation, yes, absolutely, you're right. Um, so, yeah, I've noticed uh, that it's just by creating a funnel like this, I could be doing other things and letting my product sell for me. That's the that's the whole point of this. Um, and, you know, you could do it yourself, absolutely, uh, but you probably want a training program that's going to really work for you to be able to come in to do that. Uh, but I just really quickly wanted to show you guys uh, what is working for me. The learning curve is steep when you are starting out, but it gets easier. Absolutely. I mean, when, I'm, when I first started out, I had no idea about this. But here's the thing. I, I didn't really start using, say, the power editor and all those things. Time for me to boot easy webinar back up again. And this was very timely. I appreciate your time. Of course, Phil. I, guys, I didn't know how to do any of this Facebook ad stuff until this year, really. I mean, I, I, I really just started learning about Power Editor. I c consumed some good courses, <coughs> Rick Mulready, and, uh, and I started learning about, you know, what this stuff is all about. Uh, and after having done so, I, I figured out, you know, how to pay for ads, pay very little for ads, and then, you know, obviously the, the, the money is in the lead, so getting good conversion rates and then, of course, the return on investment. Because once you get a good return on investment, it doesn't matter how much you're spending on your Facebook ad. You could ramp up your, cat, your the spend because you get ROI. Casey, thanks for the value and the connection. Of course, uh, Titch the Great, um, I love what you're doing. It sounds like you're doing some great stuff with Facebook. Uh, love to see some of your ads as well if you're, say, in the, uh, in the, I don't know if you're in one of my groups or not. Or if you're an easy webinar customer, I think you said you may be or are. Um, so, yeah, so that's it. I'm using uh, automated webinars. I do my automated webinars and don't serve up the uh, the date and time on mine now because I was before, but this is performing better than when I was doing the other way. Now you could do it the other way, and some people do. I think John Lee Dumas does it that way. I think maybe even Rick does it that way. Thanks for being so candid and open about the process. Tap hearts if you find value. Thank you, Anthony. You're so great about the heart thing. Um, ROI is huge. I, I use CL ads for business, but capped. Okay, cop, gotcha. Um, I am with Easy Webinar, and I love it. Awesome. Cool, cool. Titch the Great. That's great. Titch the Great. Um, so, yeah, I, I, so consider doing that. That's a feature of Easy Webinar. It's a feature of the automated webinar where you can actually uh, choose to serve a webinar without your audience selecting a time for it, okay. You choose uh, for them to see the ad or see the uh, webinar uh, whenever they come to the page, okay. Now, for some of you might not get that, I could of course show you guys the inside of Easy Webinar so you can get a better understanding of it if you want. 
Um, let's see. Okay, here, maybe I'll do this. I'll go into, uh, actually I was, I was just in, I'll go into test mode here, uh, edit webinar, and because I'm actually in a client site, so let me flip this around. Okay, so here's easy webinar. Uh, when you're going to create a webinar, if you're going to create an automated webinar, chances are you're going to create a recurring event, okay? Uh, you would name the event, you'd call it something like test or whatever it's going to be. You would stream it as an automated event, meaning that it streams in your attendees or it streams um, in real time. Uh, you would stream it in your admin time zone or your own time zone. Now me, your event selection time zone can be all sorts of stuff. Me, I'm going to go with um, the, my attendees' own time zone, okay? Now, how often am I going to stream the event out? I'm going to stream it out, say, every single day, okay? Uh, and let's see. Number of block days to show is one. I'm going to add in here. So now let me show you what just happened. So I, I'm going to stream out a few times in the day. So I'm going to do a 1 p.m., a 5 p.m., a 8 p.m., okay, and an 11 a.m., oops, messed that up, 8 p.m., sorry, 8 p.m., and one more at 11 a.m., and it doesn't matter the way you uh, put this on here, it will always set it up correctly uh, when it's served out. Okay, so now when you add another time, what platform is this? This is Easy Webinar, right there, boom, Easy Webinar. So when you add another time to one, it automatically asks this question. Should next available time to registrants, should show next available time to registrants automatically? If I turn this on to yes, whenever someone gets there, it will serve the next available time. So let's say they show up at 7 p.m., okay? Uh, it will show them the 8 or the, uh, yeah, the, the 8 p.m. And it will not show them the option of 11 a.m. Now, if I chose to turn this off, and I chose to say uh, how many days to show on the registration page, that's what this means. If I chose two days, it would show today and tomorrow. Let's say I chose uh, two days and then I decided to have a block day, okay, by one day, all right? What that means is, what that means is that um, I show, uh, I, let's, well, so here, here we go. So number of days to show on the registration page. One, the next available date, but I block it by a day. So meaning that so when someone comes to the registration page, they can't register for that day. They have to register the day after, all right? Does that make sense? Now, I could do zero block days, which would allow them to register for the same day that they come to the page, okay? Come to, they could register for the webinar on the same day that they visit the registration page. If I put one, it will stop them from registering on that day and push it to the next available day, okay? And by putting show next uh, available time to registrants automatically, it will push this whole thing uh, and it, won't, it will um, not give them an option to choose like this one. Obviously, you know, this one has, you know, times to choose, right? Um, and it's because he did not select that, which is totally fine. And these are different options that you have inside Easy Webinar. You can watch the replay now or choose a future date. Uh, and you know, sometimes this gives people flexibility, which is nice. But I've just been noticing that with uh, with um, the having these two additional fields, you know, the, it can cause conversion. It can incre it can decrease conversion rate. So my thing is I've been just been testing this stuff out, playing around with it, seeing how we can increase conversions. And by doing it this way, where I block by a day, so it's, you know, obviously the 20th today, I don't let them uh, register, I let them register, but they can't watch the event until tomorrow. And then I just have them sign up. Do you think Facebook ads convert better for retail products? I own a, a real estate company and spend a lot on Zillow. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it could definitely perform. I think a webinar is a great way if you have a real estate product. I mean, oftentimes we have people that use our system to do um, to do actually like open houses. They, they do uh, virtual open houses with our system because they can stream it out either in real time. So Easy Webinar does both live and automated webinars. Uh, but the automated webinar is nice because you can kind of pre-create your video ahead of time, right? This, this funnel right here is a pre-created webinar. So it's, it streams in real time 
and it has the it, it, the look and feel of live, I guess you'd say. Um, it has the engagement that can come from live, not exactly totally engaged engagement, but it, it definitely gives people the ability to like um, really understand what you're doing through a webinar that you don't have to be at because. Obviously, your time is precious. If you can't always be at a webinar, this is the next best thing, okay? It kind of is a teaching mechanism uh, and a tool that you can use. Um, so anyway, that's what I've noticed, that my Facebook ads and uh, going to something like this perform really well. Uh, it's one of my uh, lead strategies, okay? That along with, you know, joint venture partnerships and Periscope are two things that are really doing well for me. Um, and I, you know, definitely suggest you hopping in and doing it yourself. I mean... This is, you know, when you can generate 2,000 to 4,000 leads a month um, by using paid traffic, you, you have fewer need of having affiliates or partners. I mean, that's the beauty of it, is that you, you, you have more autonomy, I guess you'd say, right? Uh, so I definitely recommend, you know, if you can get a good return on investment with Facebook too, that's another way to do it. And it's just a question of having, a, how to present a good presentation, how to, you know, how to sell at that point, right? But then how to sell without selling. Sorry, my hair's a mess, guys. But, and, and that's kind of the idea behind all this stuff. Guys, if you don't have easy webinar, just buy it because of Casey. He is real moving out of webinar jam. Thanks, Titch the Great. I really appreciate it. Um, I really appreciate the, uh, the sentiment. That's very sweet of you. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that's it. I mean, these are just elements that you kind of figure out on your own. You, 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 and you kind of need to go to a place where you can learn it. Um, if you guys want to learn more about this stuff, you know, uh, I think it's just a question of kind of tweaking and playing with it and getting an idea of this. Uh, we have people in our Facebook group all the time that are, you know, learning every single day. I have one girl named Mello who actually, she started coming in to my Periscopes and, and she said, I'm just writing this down so you guys can have it. Uh, she said that she was able to get 2,000 leads from Periscope after I kind of told her what she needed to do with it. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, that's some of the things that kind of I teach. What's the difference between the Easy Webinar and Webinar Jam? The biggest difference, Don, I would say, is that Easy Webinar does both live and automated webinars from one dashboard. Um, and how that works is this. You can start a live event and then turn it into an automated event with one click of the button. Uh, you can also start a live event uh, and then switch it to an automated event and then switch it back to a live event and not have any of your previous registrants affected. Um, now, that's the difference is that, you know, Webinar Jam, I think by itself, is just a live platform where Easy Webinar does both live and automated. We have been for quite some time, uh, and we are doing some cool stuff with, uh, with our next version, which I can talk to you about later on. Yep, I have Webinar Jam, but I'm going to switch out to Easy Webinar, Easy Webinar, better, plan, and simple. And we have really quality customer service, guys, so if you wanted to know more about that. Um, I'm not saying Webinar Jam is bad, so you guys need to understand. Um, actually, I know Mike uh, feels him very well. He's a great guy, and that product is a great product. So just realize that, that I would never say anything bad about it. Um, but I, I appreciate you guys saying that you want to move over. But I will say this, that, you know, uh, uh, we have quality people that will come in and help you with anything you, you have questions on, okay? Uh, that's, I think, the bottom line is that, you know, um, we are a community here. We love uh, the people that come into our, our community, and we want to help nurture you to make sure you are doing well. I have both, but moving full-time here. Gotcha, Titch the Great, gotcha. And a lot of people do. A lot of people have us, and they have Webinar Jam. I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of what <laughs> sometimes happens. So, guys, if you want to join me for a mastermind group, uh, you see this? You can even uh, do a screenshot. It's Tribe Minded. Wait, did I spell that wrong? Tribe Mind. Yeah, I spelled it wrong. Hold on. Took that down wrong. Tribe Minded. Sorry. www.tribeminded.com. So, for those that want to see it, here it is right here. Tribeminded.com. It's a Facebook group where we talk about these strategies. Okay, tribeminded.com. Yes, exactly, tribeminded.com, right. Um, that's one entry point where you can come into our Facebook group where we talk about this stuff. But if you want to know more about webinars or you want to check out my automated webinar yourself, here are two entry points right here. caseyzeman.com forward slash webinar. That's the one I just showed you. Okay, so you can go to caseyzeman.com forward slash webinar. 
that will bring you in to that automated webinar. You can test out what that automated webinar feels like to get a sense and feel of it. Or if you want to join and go into the mini course, it's, thank you so much, I appreciate it. It's webinarminicourse.com, webinarminicourse.com. Uh, that will bring you into the mini course all about webinars. Uh, and both of them have uh, free PDFs, uh, workbooks that you can use. Uh, they're quality courses, and I'm not saying that because I'm the one that created them. I actually have people that have said, Casey, uh, th these programs are worth thousands of dollars. I've paid thousands of dollars for a program uh, just like what you're teaching in these free courses. And the reason we do it is because both of those go into the software. So I can afford to teach you a lot of high-quality stuff about webinars because of the fact that I'm not selling, at this point, a webinar program. I'm selling a webinar software. But I have been doing webinars very successfully since 2012. My first year of doing webinars, I made about $245,000 selling a YouTube course and uh, also built up a list of about 14,000. Okay, that was my first experience with doing webinars. Um, and since then, you know, we, we built a software all around that. And of course, around the ability to do both live and automated webinars. And then um, in that course, whichever one you decide to go into, it teaches a, a blueprint for launching with webinars and online events. It teaches you six things that you can do to have a, a high converting sales webinar. And then it teaches you all about the white, uh, sorry, it teaches you all about automated events. Uh, you have a white whiteboard. Yes. Nice. I need to get a spokesperson. Yes. So there it is. You guys want to take a screenshot of that? Go for it. Bam. You can take a screenshot of that if you wanted to. Right? There we go. I'll take a screenshot of that. Okay. There we go. Um, so anyway, that's, that is that. That is, they say, is that. Thank you guys so much for uh, coming to this Periscope. And of course, uh, for those who are in the know, we are doing a hearts contest. And I see that you guys still have been sending the hearts. And I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I'll probably do uh, another Periscope tonight all about, all about the Hearts Contest uh, that's more specific to the Hearts Contest. Um, but all those who are sending hearts, you guys rock. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I hope this was valuable. I hope I taught something. If you guys want to watch the replay, you can. You can also send hearts on the replay. And please do share this with your friends, your followers, and fans if you have not done so and if you feel like they could benefit from this training. And, of course, follow me if you haven't been following me. Hope this was valuable enough for you to start following me. Um, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next scope whenever I do another scope. Okay? All right. Hopefully I'll, I'll look a bit more presentable than just my John Deere hat and scruffy face. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I will talk to you all very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Titch. Thanks, Anthony. Really appreciate it. Always great scope. Thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Okay. Bye.